Hello indulgers, assalamu alaikum, welcome to my kitchen. I'm so glad you're all here. I hope everyone is in the best of health. Today we are taking our taste buds on a journey to Senegal, the home of the original jollof rice. Tiboudien is Senegal's national dish and they made no mistake making it so because it's so full of flavor and I totally get why. The genius combination of flavorful red rice, beautifully seasoned fish and an array of hearty vegetables really does tie this beautiful dish together to perfection. So let's begin with the ingredients that we need for this dish. Today we're going to use some fresh parsley, loads of carrots, eggplant, cabbage, red capsicum. I've got here a variety of chilies, my petty bell peppers, also known as papachito, as well as red chilies, four onions, some tomatoes here, some leek. These are organic leeks, which I got from Opoko Trading in Kumasi, as well as some spring onions and some tamarind. Tamarind is commonly used in Senegalese cooking, and I'll show you how I like to use it later. For my seasoning, I'm going to be using all the seasoning that you see here on the screen, and I will definitely walk you through as well as we carry on with the recipe. Powdered doa doa, white pepper, black pepper, some sea salt as well. So to start off with, we're going to prepare the green seasoning known as ngos. This is a parsley-based seasoning that we're going to use to marinate our fish as well as to prepare our tomato base for the jollof rice. Into my food processor, I'm adding my pre-washed bunch of parsley followed by coriander, one purple onion, two cloves of garlic, a handful of petit bell peppers, some leeks, as well as spring onion. To season my encos, I'm going to add some freshly cracked black pepper, about a tablespoon, as well as sea salt. Add about a tablespoon. Blend your nokos seasoning until it is somewhat coarse but well incorporated. So Tiaboudien literally translates as red rice and fish. So today for my choice of fish, I'm using group of fish. And to season it, I'm going to add some salt, adobe seasoning, and powdered white pepper. With my clean hands, I'm going to massage those ingredients in. And with my fingers, I'm going to create some pockets within the fish, which we will fill with the green seasoning. Repeat the step until all the fish is beautifully marinated and stuffed. If you're still here with me up until this part of the video, please go ahead and hit that like button for me, drop a comment below and let me know where you are watching from. Before me, I have some king prawns and calamari, which I'm going to season with some salt, white pepper again, and some of that green seasoning. Once again, the same ingredients we use to season our fish. Give the seafood a good stir and set it aside. While our seafood is marinating, it's time for us to prepare our tomato base for the jollof rice. Into the food process, I've added my tomatoes, garlic, petty bell peppers and red chilies and one whole purple onion. I'm going to blitz this until it is smooth. Now into a large point, I'm adding some vegetable oil, which I'm going to preheat to prepare to shallow fry the fish. Once the oil is relatively hot, I'm going to fry the fish until they're browned and are slightly golden on all sides. The aim is not to cook the fish all the way through, but frying it at this stage will make sure that the fish does not break apart in the latter stage. Once the fish is fried and removed, add some momoni into the oil. Traditionally, at this stage of the recipe, snails are added to the oil, but as a substitute, I have included my homemade fermented shrimp. While the momoni breaks down in the oil and releases its flavor, I'm going to slice these onions and then add them to the pot. Fry the onions down until they are translucent and begin to caramelize. Introduce the tomato paste once the momoni has completely broken down and you can extract the bone. For today's recipe, I have used one and a half cups of tomato paste. Stir in your tomato paste so that it becomes one with the onions. Next, you're going to add about a teaspoon of doa doa powder. This is fermented dried lotus bean powder. At this stage, we're going to prep our turmeric. 
This is how the tamarind typically appears in the markets here in Ghana, in a large clump. And so what you're going to do is put it into a bowl. So here I am doing some quality control. Of course, I have to taste the tamarind to make sure it's good, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And next, add some hot water to help you extract the pulp. Cover and set aside. We will revisit this later. The key to achieving a beautifully red jollof rice is to allow the tomato paste to fry over a long period of time with the onions. But you must keep a close eye on the tomato paste and stir it frequently to avoid burning. And once the tomato paste has relatively gotten dark, I've added in that pureed tomato mixture that I blended earlier. Due to the magic of editing, it appears that this was achieved in moments, but in actuality, it took me about two hours to achieve this rich, dark, concentrated tomato base. At this stage, you're also going to add about a tablespoon of that green seasoning as well as a couple of bay leaves. This is truly a labor of love. Please don't rush this process because the longer you fry this tomato base mixture, the better the flavor develops. Once you're satisfied with the richness of your tomato base, begin to add your seasoning. So here I'm adding two chicken stock cubes and one shrimp stock cube. Season your jollof stew with salt and don't forget to taste and make the necessary adjustments. For the quantity of rice I've used today, I'm going to add about six cups of water into this pot. And then I'm going to give it a good stir and proceed to top it up a little bit more and then adjust the salt before adding my vegetables. So I'm chopping up my cabbage into quarters. I peeled and cut my cassava. I've halved my eggplants, cut up the red capsicum and okra and the carrots are going in whole. So firstly, I'm going to add the fish that we fried into our stewing pot of jollof liquid. Don't forget to include the juices from the fish. Now it's time for us to add our vegetables, starting with the vegetables that take the longest to cook. So for today, that's the cassava. Following that is the eggplant and okra. Cover and simmer for about eight minutes until the fish is completely cooked. Remove the fish and then reintroduce the other remaining vegetables. My absolute favorite part of Senegalese jollof is the beautiful cabbage. The cabbage tends to soak up all of that beautiful flavor. And that's why you see my pot is saturated with it. I can eat this cabbage for days. I also love my carrots to be a bit on the crunchy side. So I add them in long after most of the other vegetables have already cooked. At this stage, our tamarind has been resting for hours, and so it was really easy to squeeze out all of that pork. Unfortunately, I was not able to show you all of that on camera. At this point, the cabbage is cooked all the way through, so we're gonna remove that from the pot as well as the okra. Once that's done, add in your red capsicum and allow that to cook alongside the remaining vegetables. I've also removed about two cups of the jollof liquid and set that aside. Into a preheated frying pan, I'm adding some oil as well as some sliced purple onion. Into the frying pan, I'm going to add my calamari and saute it until it is almost all the way cooked before adding some cracked black pepper followed by the king prawn. Into that, I'm going to add a little bit of Maggi Arom seasoning and I'm going to continue to saute to give the calamari a bit more time to cook. Lastly, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of that jollof liquid that I reduced from earlier. At this point, all our vegetables are perfectly cooked and have been removed out of the jollof liquid. So into the jollof base, we're gonna to toss a bit more peppers. I've got the green and the red again for that extra punch of spice. Then I'm going to proceed to add my washed rice. So for the quantity of jollof I was looking to make, I've used two cups of basmati rice and four cups of jasmine. Stir in the rice until every single grain has had its fair share of jollof stew. Now you're going to want to add about 90% of that jollof liquid that we reduced earlier back into the pot. Stir it in nicely and then cover away and allow it to steam 
and cook in its own liquid on medium heat for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the rice is beautifully cooked and fluffy. Introduce a few tablespoons of the tamarind puree back into the remaining reduced liquid. Stir and taste as you go to see the level of sourness that you prefer. Our jollof rice is cooked. I'm going to give it a final stir and proceed to plate. Arrange your vegetables onto the rice as well as your fish. One of the things that makes this dish so inviting is how beautifully plated it is. The lovely selection of colourful vegetables and that deep red rice. Add your remaining seafood. You can garnish with some chopped up parsley or perhaps some sliced lemons to help cut the grease. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe as much as I did sharing it with all of you. If you do try it, please come back and let me know how you enjoyed it. Just to finish, I'm going to put a bit of this tamarind mixture around the border of this plate. That's it, indulgers. The dish is complete. And I hope to see you again in the next one.